The scripture text this morning is a very familiar uh, text from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, beginning in the sixth verse. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to also to all who have longed for his appearance. Lord God, we give you thanks for the hearing of this message this morning. Now, Lord God, may your Holy Spirit rest upon the word as it is proclaimed, that it may open our hearts and minds, that it may change and, and, and challenge us and set us free to be on the, the adventure that you have called each and every one of us on to. Lord God, bless this word this day. And may your word come through me, or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord God, for yet one more chance for us to try to get it right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. That is an amazing testimony to someone living a life of faith. Oftentimes this text is read, and I've read it many times, at a funeral, at a memorial service, to, to testify uh, of the faith of the person who was deceased, the witness of faith that they shared with those around them. It's a tribute to a person who has truly lived a life of faith. It verifies faithful witness. But this morning I wanted to take this text and, and consider it in a different way. Not at the end of someone's life, but as a testimony to the way we live our life today and how we run the race of faith and how we fight the good fight. Billy Graham once said that I never read in the Bible where God retired anybody. That may come to, with sadness to some, but it's true. There's nowhere in the Bible that says we're going to get out of the race. Maybe it's because the race doesn't seem to end. Oh, oh a, a race might stop at, the, at an end point, but then another race begins. But this morning, let's consider the race not being a race that we run and jump or hop or, or skip like anybody else, like, like the girl, uh, kids were talking about, but let's consider the race that God puts us on as an adventure. Let's see life as an adventure. And if we see life as an adventure, why would we ever take ourselves out of the game because life can be awfully exciting, amen? Amen. It can be a good thing. God has given us so much. So the race that Paul writes is truly an adventure. In fact, Paul was on an adventure. If you take a look at Paul's journey, what did he do? Well, he took some cruises. You know, at least he was on a boat. He was shipwrecked a couple of times. But he saw the sights. He went to several different countries. Oh, he was imprisoned a few times. He was beat up a few times and you know, left for dead a few times. But you know, all the way through that, he had the joy of faith because he was witnessing the good news of, of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He was fighting the good fight. He was running the race. It was, it, was a, it was an adventure for him. Now, I'm not saying we need to be shipwrecked, and I'm not saying we need to be beat up all the time and, and all that sort of thing, but we need to run the race. We need to run the race that is before us, the one that is inspired and engineered by God. But it takes a fight. Sometimes it's a battle. It's a battle to run the race with perseverance. It's a battle sometimes to fight the race. Because there always seems to be circumstances in our lives times of uncertainty, times of suffering, times of pain, and there always seems to be people every once in a while 
that seemed to rain on the parade, that sucked the life out of us spiritually. And so we need to fight the fight against that. But when we fight the good fight, we see the good even in the presence of the bad. We see the excitement in the sublime. And for you musicians, the allegro in the largo. Leonard Sweet once wrote that the preacher's unpardonable sin is to preach a gospel that fails to live. That is true. How could any preacher worth their salt not preach this gospel that we have without power? without joy. This good news, how could it be nothing less than something exciting to be presented? By the same token, how can anyone who hears the gospel and lives the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and feels the love of God in their lives not witness the life that God has offered to them? How could you not do that? The fight is all about not succumbing to those powers of doom and gloom, of bitter and resentful. Because those things have a way of controlling our every action if we are not careful. When we succumb to the, to the negatives in our lives, all of a sudden we begin to wallow in the negatives of our lives. And we begin to feel ourselves being pulled out of the adventure that God has set before us. Saints, it's not worth the time. But to get around that, you see the good, even in the bad. Even those who, who have a hard time allowing the sun to shine through even in the darkest days. or those who fail to see the value that God has placed in their hearts and in our souls. Fighting the good fight is seeing God at work in everything. Recently, I've asked folks how they're doing, and, and, the, and the newest phrase out there is, I'm living the life. Have you heard that? I'm living the life, whatever it might be. I like that. But what if we were really living the life? What if we were living the life of faith? Prepare not to do physical battle, but being ready for the adventure that God has placed us on, to be ready to go on an adventure of faith. What if we did that? To run the race of faith is to be part of the adventure of life. There's an old BMW commercial which I thought is, was great, and the slogan was, life isn't around the corner. It is the corner. If you keep waiting for around the corner, it'll never get there, but enjoy the corner itself. Enjoy the time, now. No sense in trying to enjoy the past. It's gone. No sense in trying to enjoy what's around the corner because it's not there yet. So enjoy the corner. Celebrate the corner. Celebrate what God has given right now because saints is truly an adventure. It means to celebrate God all the way through in everything that you do. Sometimes you're running uphill. Sometimes you're running downhill. Sometimes you're running straight. Sometimes you're running in the rain. Sometimes you're running in the snow. Sometimes you're running on an autumn day at about 55, 60 degrees, sunny, gentle breeze. Can't do much better than that, especially you half marathoners. Right, Chuck? All right. I'm not a half marathoner, but I guess imagine that would be a good time to run. I am ready. I am ready to run the adventure. How about you? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to really celebrate what's before us today? 
It can be a series of little, seemingly insignificant things. Or it could be things of mammoth proportions and everything in between. That is what God has placed before us. That is what God is calling us to be a part of, this adventure that we're on. But to be part of the race, to be in the adventure, means to be eternally optimistic. To know that no matter where the race takes us, no matter where the adventure leads us, that God is always standing in the gap for us. That God is always giving us strength, giving us hope, giving us assurance that our lives will be okay. As Joshua 3, verse 5 screams, Tomorrow the Lord will do great things among you. Well, folks, tomorrow's today. Because if we said that yesterday, then that means that God's doing great things for us today. Because today was... Go home and think about that. God is doing great things among us right now. But you know, you've got to believe, it's just like when, when Jesus met with Martha, and Martha was all upset because her brother Lazarus died, and, and something to be upset about, and Jesus told Martha, Martha, do you believe? Do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life, that those who die yet will live, and all who live and believe in me will never die? Do you believe that, Martha? Because if you believe that, you're on the journey. You're part of the adventure. And that will give you hope for the new day. Do you believe? Saints, you've got to believe. When we're running on the curve, on the corner, we've got to believe now. You know, the prodigal son's dad believed. He believed when his son left and squandered all his inheritance, came back in shambles, pig junk all over him from living in the midst of the swine. What did he do? He burst open the door and ran as fast as he could with arms wide open, saying, son, you're back. You were lost, but now you're found. He believed. He never left the adventure. He never left the race. That's running the race of faith. That's fighting the good fight, knowing that no matter what obstacle will not be pulled, pulled away. It's living the joy. Joy upon joy. Not with some Eeyore mentality. You know what that is. All is lost. Life is not fair, it's going to rain again today. You know all that stuff. Well, that's kind of fun every once in a while, but you can't live your life doing that. That's not going to get you anywhere down the road. It's not going to keep you on the adventure. It's not going to keep you in the race. What it's going to do is keep you right there and wallowing in whatever you're wallowing in. You've got to move ahead. You've got to live the life that God has given so when someone's fighting a good fight and they finish the race and they kept the faith means that they're eternally optimistic. They know that God is their captain on the well-fought fight. Running the race, running the adventure that is before us is about living our life with a wow before every phrase. Wow! God did that? Wow! Did you see that sunrise? Did you see that sunset? Wow, God! You have given us so much. Wow! It's amazing what happens when you live your life with a sense of wow. Because suddenly you see the grandeur of God and the little things of life. You see the grandeur of God in all the things around you. 
you start living life a little bit different. You begin to actually celebrate the ministry of others, to celebrate another's life, to celebrate the redemption of a sinner, to celebrate our own redemption, and to look back on the adventure and say, wow. Have I been blessed by God or what? Have I been blessed by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords or what? That's living a life of faith. That's running the race with perseverance. To finish the race and to keep the faith is a fight. But it's a battle using the tools of forgiveness, grace, mercy, and peace. It is an adventure of constant thanksgiving. And keeping the faith is about continually being in awe of God. Being in awe of the majesty of God. Saying, oh my God, the things you have done, the places you are taking the places I have been. It's oftentimes about living on the edge, yet still in the race. So are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you ready to be on the adventure of your eternal life? Because that's what God is setting us on. I'm ready. And I pray we are all the same. That when our days on earth are done, that someone will stand up and say, they have fought the good fight. They have finished the race. And they have kept the faith. Amen and amen.